Hi, welcome to Sutton Brain Hub. In this video, we're reviewing the external carotid artery and its branches. So firstly, it's worth reminding yourself of its origin. From the arch of the aorta, we first see the right brachiocephalic trunk, which soon splits into the right subclavian and the right common carotid arteries. The next branch from the aorta is the left common carotid, shortly followed by the left subclavian artery. The external carotid begins with the internal carotid at the bifurcation of the common carotid artery. If you need a refresher on the internal carotid and its branches, check out our rapid review. We've put the link in the description. So the carotid bifurcation occurs at the level of the upper border of the thyroid cartilage at spinal level C4. The external carotid lies anteromedial to the internal carotid in the neck and is crossed by cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve. Travelling posteriorly to the external carotid is the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve 9, and branches of the vagus, cranial nerve 10. The external carotid gives off eight main branches, which we'll look at shortly. So here we can see the bifurcation of the common carotid and structures relating to the external carotid, including the internal jugular vein with some cranial nerves, notably the glossopharyngeal nerve, the hypoglossal nerve, the vagus and some of its branches, as well as the accessory nerve. Inferiorly, it's also worth noting ansa cervicalis embedded in the anterior wall of the carotid sheath. Now, let's run through the order of the external carotid branches in ascending order. Firstly, we've got the superior thyroid artery. Next up, we have the lingual artery, which runs deep to the stylohyoid and posterior belly of the digastric muscles. Then, the ascending pharyngeal artery, which travels up superiorly along the pharynx. The next branch is the facial artery. Then the occipital artery, which travels posteriorly, deep to the posterior belly of the digastric muscle. After this, we have the posterior auricular artery, which travels behind the external acoustic meatus and mastoid process. The penultimate branch is the maxillary artery, which gives off many of its own branches, including the middle meningeal artery. And finally, the remaining branch of the external carotid is the superficial temporal artery. Alright, so let's go through these eight branches with their function. Firstly, the superior thyroid artery supplies the thyroid gland, infrahyoid, and sternocleidomastoid muscles. Next up, the lingual artery supplies the intrinsic muscles of the tongue and the floor of the mouth. The ascending pharyngeal artery supplies the prevertebral muscles, middle ear, cranial meninges, and of course the pharynx itself. The next branch is the facial artery, which goes on to supply the tonsils, palate, and submandibular glands. The occipital artery supplies the posterior scalp. The posterior auricular artery supplies the parotid, facial nerve, ear, lateral scalp and nearby muscles. The maxillary artery supplies the mandible, teeth, gums, the buccinator muscle and muscles of mastication. The middle meningeal artery branch supplies the skull cap and dura mater. It's clinically important because in severe head injury it can rupture and cause an extradural hematoma. Lastly, the superficial temporal artery branch supplies the upper and lateral scalp. It's worth noting that this artery is commonly affected in giant cell arteritis. So, that was quite a lot, but luckily there's a mnemonic for remembering these eight branches of the external carotid, which is, some anatomists like freaking out poor medical students. And so that concludes this Sutton Brain Hub video on the external carotid artery and its branches. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment for what topic you want us to cover next. And do check out our website for free quizzes to test what you've learned. Find us on Facebook. Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.